is a fantastic place to, to, to work. People is so uh, engaged with the company and the project that that makes a difference. Passionate about looking after people and everybody going home in one piece. People from different cultures and people who speak different languages, they have different perspectives. Es el cerebro y el corazón del proyecto. Clean energy to power 630,000 homes. Every day is different, every day has its own challenges. Lloviendo, haciendo frío, viento. We're united by the wind. people working across different continents, with people working in China, in the Middle East, across Spain, Norway, UK, many different people, many different nationalities, all coming together with the same commitment and drive. It's a real pleasure to be part of a project with the team that we've had. Vengeance traffic, uh, that's you outbound. So. Good afternoon to you. Um, I'm just outside your 500 metres there. From there you can control Great Yarmouth operations, Netherlands operations, Lowestoft operations and the site uh, operations, which is amazing the widespread of the control you have to, to make from a single point. So this shows us from the Burstall substation at Bramford, our 37 kilometre cable route around the north circle of Ipswich, which then comes to Bordsy at Landfall and follows around 85 kilometres offshore and terminates at our offshore substation placed centrally in the East Anglia 1 field. So we've got to drill um, these ducts into, into position um, and obviously that will protect the cliff face as well. Um, there is quite a bit of coastal erosion along this um, coastline so obviously we, we want to preserve that. Sustainability means doing what you need to do today without compromising the needs of the future and that's why when you do these projects you've got to be thinking about the impact you have on the environment. The environmental department is a team of passionate environmental uh, specialists. So here on the project we've had a multiple uh, range of species that we've needed to protect. We've got great crested newts and for that we've put newt fence in in the ground. Behind me you can see the eco barrier, so our marsh harriers, the schedule one bird of prey, can, be, uh, can behave normally. Also behind me you can see that the watercourse banks have been strimmed low and that's to keep water voles out from our work area. And we have to stay with the project right through construction to the end to ensure that we leave the place as we found it. The archaeological finds on this site were just amazing. It's something that you will look back on much later in your career and say, I can't believe we found a six and a half thousand year old artefact on our site. The nature of the archaeology and the preservation um, is, is quite unique, as I say, especially for the region. Um, and a project of this scale is, is a once in a lifetime uh, opportunity for most archaeologists, but the actual quality of the heritage we've uncovered has been unprecedented, um, especially around the Suffolk area. So for most of our archaeologists, they'll never experience something of, of this magnitude again in their careers.
So for, for the purpose of this project, it's on the ground. When we finished, yeah, there's less disruption to stakeholders and the locals. It's less impact moving forward, basically. So what we have here is, the, uh, is one of the circuits coming from the offshore substation. Um, th this system is running at 220,000 volts. These cables are, are the end of the onshore cable route, which is approximately 37 kilometers, where we connect to the offshore cables, which are approximately 85 kilometers, that takes us off to the offshore substation. The key to this, this work that we're doing here, really, is about the innovation that we have with, uh, with the technology for, for this type of system. We're pushing the very boundaries of what's possible with alternating current. So there's a lot of challenges with the design, there's a lot of challenges with the construction, and certainly with the commissioning of the process. This isn't an office-based project. We've got people working out in the, the Southern North Sea in very challenging offshore conditions. And it's, and it's completely necessary that people have got the right level of training so that in the, the event of any emergency situation they're well trained and everyone knows what they're doing. I am very passionate about the subject of looking after people, about touching their life in some kind of positive way. So when people come and train with us, it's not just about informing them, it's about conditioning them as well to get their mojo turned on, to raise the hackles on the back of their neck, to use controlled aggression for when something should go wrong. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. So the wind farm is still under construction, but when we get into O&M, this, the whole wind farm is going to last my entire life. So I'll definitely be out there for what I can see, lifetime. We are looking to take on people who come to these courses. We are investing in the future. This is about long-term jobs uh, for the area, for East Anglia, and to service our wind farms. So this is keen to provide a legacy of skills and investment and jobs in the local area. It is really important uh, that uh, wherever we go, we want to build up uh, the knowledge, the skills, so we can keep uh, local people involved in maintaining and operating our assets. This is the home of East Anglia One and it will be the heart and the brain of all the activity in the project. So up to 100 people will be working in this building and the idea is that the design has included for project growth so that any future work that will come from it and um, future wind farms uh, will have the capacity to take more people. Offshore wind has become part of the industrial fabric, which is amazing. And we see them tendering for work in the United States, in France, in Germany, in Iberdrola projects all over the world. Basically this flange interconnects the tower that goes on top with the jacket connection that is uh, submerged uh, in, the, in the seabed. There was a real pride in what they were doing, both in the construction but actually in the region as well and the, the expertise and the benefits that our project was sharing across the region. Está bien, todo es renovable, está bien. 
invertir en renovables y seguir creciendo en este aspecto, en este ámbito. Laboralmente aquí en Avilés nos vino muy bien, vamos, eh, a mí por lo menos personalmente empecé en esto desde el principio cuando empezaron las torres eólicas y pasamos la crisis y pasamos bastante bien, bueno, de momento seguimos trabajando y que dure muchos años. Sí, sí, 100%, todo 100%, sí. Soldadura, mirada a, a tope, sí. ¿Quién quiere café? Allí. Se organiza mucho el trabajo, tomando un café de 30 céntimos. Yo por mi parte que valió mucho la, la escuela que hubo aquí en ese asillero, por ejemplo, en el tema de andamios o de organización. Y en el 2014 fue cuando empezamos con la eólica marina y fue un, un golpe de, de montar andamios dentro de un barco, de un tanque pegado a un bloque, a montar una torre la más alta de Europa. <risa> Mira cómo la sujetan con la grúa para meterla en el mar. ¿ves? Son de las nuestras, de las que enviamos para allá. Seeing these jackets go into the water was such an important moment for the project. It's the first time you actually saw something sitting out of the water. It was probably the moment when the project really became visible. Every day is different, every day has its own challenges. Um, you definitely got to have a sense of humour and, uh, and you just have to face it as it, as it comes. They were keen to review the data and, and, and look into it. And it turns out that what we'd found was a World War I submarine that had gone missing. So this is the one in, in January 1915 that departed on its journey and then lost contact. And what, what we understand is it hit mine while off the east coast and then sunk with the four crew and 31 persons on board. And during the project we've been able to unearth the submarine and actually give some detail to what happened back in World War I at the time. So here at this port in Great Yarmouth, we're bringing together all the components that will comprise the wind turbines that we're going to install offshore. We've got here towers that have been manufactured all around Europe, in Spain, in Scotland and in Denmark. Uh, we've got uh, a crane company that is helping us to build them, that's a UK company. Uh, and that we're, we're using to do all the lifting and all the movements around site. We've got blades here behind me that are loaded onto the vessel already. They've been hand-built in our own Siemens Gamesa factory up in Hull. All 306 of them will be hand-built and brought down here to be loaded onto the ship to be installed. Uh, we've got a vessel that is uh, from our Danish supplier um, uh, that, that is going to take those components out to the, to the wind farm and build them. And then we've got the nacelles, which are the real heart of the wind turbine, the generator, transformer, and all the electronics that help manage the electricity out. They've been built in our brand new factory in Germany. They've been shipped here, and they're going to be loaded onto this vessel within days to help uh, start building the first turbines. When this project is complete, all the 102 turbines are installed and commissioned they will produce enough energy, clean energy for, uh, to power 630,000 homes. 
a bit of pressure doing things like that because it's quite an intricate piece of equipment. Um, so you just got to be careful and make sure you do everything properly, which we do, do everything safely. It's better for the environment, isn't it? It's good, it's what we want, clean energy, it's what we need. The substation came over, uh, like I said, it came over in two pieces, so it was jacket first came over on separate barges and we used the Oleg Strasnov from SHL to carry out the major lifts. So it was jacket, which is the yellow section you can see behind me, and then followed in the next weather period by the top side, which is the stainless steel section you can see above. It was done in two lifts, so one straight onto the seabed and then the pin piles, and then the top side just in one lift and fabrication period. The jacket leaving Cadiz as well was really impressive going underneath the the bridge was really a very nice footage of, yeah, of that. The, yeah. Passing the bridge with it's just a one or, or two metres of clearance, <laughs> it was quite a nervous moment for yes. a lot of people. And that the substation itself is amazing as well when you go inside and then you see all these technical rooms and all this equipment. I mean, it's really unbelievable. unbelievable. Not many companies in the market have the capability that we have to do this level of design and engineering in-house mm. to make these substations as efficient as possible. The environment which we're working, obviously, yeah, we are very remote, but the, the transfer to, to the wind farm is often a challenge for, for new people coming into the industry. Uh, even people who have worked in Merchant Navy and things like that for, uh, for long, long periods of time, these vessels, because they are small, smaller, they are, they are robust, but they are obviously uh, open to uh, movement and, uh, and, and some the, the, the sea conditions. I think when you see that image of the guys getting out of the transfer vessel, I think it's one of the most uh, rewarding images of the day when they come back home in a safely manner after a hard day of work. Tomorrow again, yep, yeah, same here again tomorrow, definitely same time. It's an enormous human effort that is what makes a project like this real. We all know that the key success factor of uh, this project is the team and uh, I think in this case they have been able to combine both the experience, the knowledge, but uh, for sure the attitude. Detrás de poder dar un interruptor y que sistemáticamente la luz llegue, hay miles de personas que hacen un trabajo profesional, han negado, renunciando a todo para que los demás tengamos servicio. Cientos de personas trabajando para poder conseguirlo. Y esta gente, pues lo hacen porque creen en eso. Las empresas son las personas. 